Hello friends, we welcome you again for our new video on DU MSc Geology 2021 question paper. Here we try to provide correct solution with a logical explanation. So let's start. Which of the following is not a characteristic feature of platforms? Digestive system is incomplete. Circulatory system is absent. Muscular system is of mesodermal origin or they are triploblastic and pseudocelomates. Remember, flatworms comes under the category of platyhelminthes, which have a certain unique characteristic features. Like they have incomplete digestive system. Remember, complete digestive system only starts from H. helminthes. They are triploblastic, that means they are composed of ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. And coelomes are absent in the case of flatworms. In fact, H. helminthes are the pseudocelomates. So in this case, the option D is a correct answer. It is not a characteristic feature of flatworms. A species in taxonomic terms can be most closely defined as a group of evolutionary related population that may not interbreed, category to which most taxonomic information is attached, or fundamental unit in evolution of organism, or a population having same evolutionary basis and free gene flow. Remember, species can be defined from various perspectives. The most common accepted definition of species would be that these are the group of organisms having mating preferences. That means they mate among each other and hence promote the frequent gene flow. Whenever they reproductively isolate from such any group of people, they do not prefer to mate with them then a speciation concept occurs. So we can get an idea of in evolution that whenever any population or a group of individual they started mating among themselves and reproductively isolate from other group of members then at that point of time a species deviation must have occurred. So a species is having a group of people with the same evolutionary history and they are promoting free gene flow among themselves. So here the option D would be the correct answer. The species inhabiting in different geographical regions are known as allopatric species, sibling species, sympatric species or biospecies. Allopatric species are the species which have been isolated from other group of members due to the geographical isolation. That means an extrinsic mechanism like a geographical isolation is playing a dominant role to divide a group of people into two different species. Now one group of people cannot mate with other group of people because of the difference in the distance and hence a allopatric species is the correct answer for this question. Which of the following lack locomotory organelles, flagellates, rhizopoda, ciliata or sporozoa? Protozoans can be divided into four groups. Mystigophora, which are flagellates, that means they have flagella pore locomotion. Ciliata, which can move through cilia. Sarcodina, which can move through pseudopodia like amoeba does. And sporozoa, which do not have any of the locomotory organs. So in this case, sporozoa, that means option D would be the correct answer. Life cycle of hydra is characterized by presence of both polyps and medusa faces. Polyp face predominant and medusa face usually absent. Polyp face nearly absent and medusa face usually predominant or absence of both. See, hydra is an cnidarian and cnidarian they alternate between polyps and medusa as two stages of their life. Polyps are asexual phase while medusa are the phase which reproduce sexually. Interestingly in hydra even though it's a cnidarian here the medusa stage is absent and only polyp stage is used for the reproduction. Hence the option B would be the correct answer that polyp phase is predominant in the case of hydra and medusa phase is usually absent. 
प्राइमरी होस्ट ऑफ फेस्टिवला इज रेड पिग शीप और अ ह्यूमन द फेस्टिवला हिपेटिका और द लीवर फ्लू द प्राइमरी होस्ट ऑफ दिस ऑर्गेनिज्म इज शीप एंड टू अ लेटर एक्सटेंट कैटल सो द ऑप्शन सी वुड बी द करेक्ट आंसर वेयर द प्राइमरी होस्ट ऑफ द फेस्टिवला वुड बी शीप एंड द सेकेंडरी होस्ट वुड बी द स्नेल वॉलेस लाइन इज प्रेजेंट इन बिटवीन ओरिएंटल एंड ऑस्ट्रेलियन रीजन इथोपियन एंड ओरिएंटल रीजन न्यूट्रॉपिकल एंड नियार्टिक रीजन पेलार्टिक एंड इथोपियन रीजन वॉलेस लाइन इज अ फॉनल बाउंड्री ड्रॉन बाय ब्रिटिश नेचुरलिस्ट रशल वॉलेस इन एटीन फिफ्टी नाइन इट सेपरेट बेसिकली द बायोजियोग्राफिकल रियाम्स ऑफ एशिया एंड ऑस्ट्रेलिया दैट मीन्स ओरिएंटल एंड Australian region. Hence, option A would be the correct answer. The alarming rate of depletion of biodiversity in recent years is mostly due to the global warming, habitat destruction, pollution by pesticides and heavy metals, or ozone depletion. As we all know, that habitat destruction is the primary cause for the loss of biodiversity. While exotic species invasion is the secondary cause of the biodiversity depletion interestingly if you see the once on this earth 14% of the earth surface was covered by the tropical rainforest and because of the heavy habitat destruction now we are left with only 6% left of such of tropical rainforest so hence in this case habitat destruction is causing the alarming rate of depletion of biodiversity in ecological succession from pioneer to climax community the biomass will decrease continuously increase and then decrease decrease and then increase or increase continuously whenever community move from pioneer to climax community definitely the number of individuals are going to increase and hence the biomass will also increase so in this case the option d would be the correct answer that whenever any pioneer community becomes a climax community the biomass definitely increase continuously the region in india that is not yet marked as a biodiversity hotspot the himalayas indo burma region the western ghat or gangetic plain any biogeographical region with a significant level of biodiversity that is under threat is known as biodiversity hotspot in case of india we are having three biodiversity hotspots that is the himalayas indo burma region the western ghat but in this case gangetic plain cannot be a biodiversity hotspot present in india a group of bacteria that extract inorganic compounds from their environment and convert them into organic nutrient compounds can be classified as such organism would be chemoautotrophs because chemoautotrophs they lack photosynthetic pigments but can perform chemosynthesis using chemical energy here the carbon source would be carbon dioxide or methane while the chemical energy will be produced by the oxidation of inorganic compounds like hydrogen hydrogen sulfide carbon monoxide ammonia or methane so hence in this case option b would be the correct answer that such group of people would be chemoautotrophs what type of food chain is it dead animals blow fly maggot frog or snake it's very simple anything started from the dead animals would be the detrital food chain so a detrital food chain it starts from dead animals which is being consumed by the maggots and then it is being consumed by the frog and later on the last highest tropical organism would be the snake in this case so option a is the correct answer allelopathy refers to inhibition of growth of one species by another by the production of secondary metabolites augmentation of sporulation 
of pathogen by the host altering the reproductive cycle of one organism by another or artificial protection of crops using pheromones any beneficial or harmful effects of one organism over other by the release of certain biochemicals which might influence the growth survival or even reproduction of neighboring organism is known as allelopathy so here the option a would be the correct answer that allelopathy refers to the inhibition of growth of one species by another by the production of secondary metabolites match list with list two items list one contains the organism while list two contains the larva see you need to remember a lot of larva of different organisms because this is a pet question which comes in the exams where the you have to match the following or they are going to ask you a different larva of different trophic levels or even organism in this case if we see the hexaconth larva belongs to tenia the glochidium larva is belonging to unio planula is belonging to obelia tornaria larva is for acron worm or balanoglossus while miracidium larva is of fasciola hence in this case the option c would be the correct answer that tenia is having hexaconth larva unio is having glochidium larva obelia will be having planular larva while balanoglossus is having tornaria larva to make it simple we are also giving you a table where you can learn a different phyla and their classical larval form a haltier is a vestibular organ of butterfly modified four wing of bird beetle balancing organ of a house fly or organ used by a male insect to attract female for mating see haltier is a club shaped organ of flying insects which provide information about body rotation during the flight like just like a gyroscope and hence it is a balancing organ of a typical dipteran so option c would be the correct answer for this question which of the following are cyzocelomids platyhelminthes annelida and mollusca ashhelminthes annelida and orthopoda annelida orthopoda and mollusca orthopoda mollusca and echinodermata first of all you should know what is cyzocele it is a body cavity which is present between the digestive tract and musculature of body wall and it is formed due to the splitting of mesodermal mass remember the three group of people which are the classical example of cyzocelomid which we can remember as a mnemonic arm a a m annelida orthopoda and mollusca so option c is the correct answer in this case in bivalves which structures secrete pearl whenever any foreign mass comes and is stuck up between shell and mantle of bivalves they start secreting layers of nacre which is also known as mother of pearl and which ultimately start forming the pearl hence in this case the option c is the correct answer the common character of anopheles hyrudinia cymex and xenopsila which is a flea is first of all you should know that anopheles cymex and flea that means xenopsila they all are insect hyrudinia on the contrary is an annelid so hence c option would be incorrect all insects are having excretory organ as a malpigian tubule while hyrudinia has a metanephridia as a excretory organ that means option a would be also incorrect saliva contains anticoagulant yes they all are sanguivorous that means they are blood sucking animals and they must be releasing anticoagulant in their saliva so that they can have a free flow of blood during sucking of blood and that's where option b would be the correct answer in this case following are the statements regarding cephalic appendages of prawns statement 1 there are three pairs of cephalic appendages of prawn 
statement 2 the cephalic appendages of prawns are antennae mandible and maxillae so in the light of our statement we have to choose the most appropriate answer from the options below that both are correct of statement or both statements are incorrect or either of these are correct see prawns are crustacean and one of the important feature of a crustaceans are that they are having five pairs of cephalic appendages which are antineal next pair would be antennae third would be the pair of mandible and last two would be the first maxillae and second maxillae pair so hence both the statements are here incorrect that there are five pairs has to be there in the prawn as far as cephalic appendages are concerned as statement two there is a missing information here that antineal and second maxillae is also there in the case of prawn so here the option b is the correct option that both statement one and statement two are incorrect as far as cephalic appendages of prawns are concerned formation of migratory locust swans occurs due to first of all we should know what are locusts locusts are actually the grasshoppers grasshoppers are generally solitary in nature and they can very well blend into the environment but whenever the population of such grasshoppers increases drastically in their local area then they become a more colored more dominant gregarious forms they are more visible in nature and to sustain such large population they have to go to a distant area where they have plenty of foods and also definitely a favorable breeding conditions like my moist soils and all and hence any grasshopper which is going to become a migratory locust or the swarm or large population it is just because of they want have a favorable condition for breeding as well as plenty of food osphariidium is associated with osphariidium is an olfactory organ in cone snail which is having chemoreceptor this osphariidium it tests the incoming water current for any possible food particle so hence osphariidium is associated with olfactory system option d is correct identify the statement that is not true for desmosomes these are cell to cell junctions found between adjacent cell that is true these contain desmosomal cadherins the cytosolic domains of desmosomal cadherins are linked to the actin cytoskeleton by adapter proteins the extracellular domain of desmosomal cadherins of adjacent cells bind to each other by heterophilic interactions basically desmosomes jo hote hain they are present in the cells to ensure that these cells can withstand with the mechanical stress unlike adherent junctions desmosomal junctions are tethered to the intermediate filaments network with their cadherins and these cadherins are of two types basically desmoglein and desmocollins which are connected to each other by the heterophilic interaction that means they are connecting a desmoglein will be connected to desmocollins while a desmocollin will be connected to the desmoglein heterophilic interactions on the cytosolic side cytoplasmic side they contain keratin based filaments which are anchored in the protein plaque so hence in this case the statement a is correct that means these are cell to cell junctions found between adjacent cell then these contain desmosomal cadherin which are present between the intracellular side that means between two cells and then extracellular domains of desmosomal cadherins they are linked together by the heterophilic interactions cytosolic domain of desmosomal cadherins are linked to the actin cytoskeleton no they are linked to the keratin based intermediate filaments so option c is wrong that means it is not true for the desmosomes the zonula occludens protein in tight junction of epithelial cell sheet is required for binding of tight junction proteins in adjacent cell linking the cytosolic domain of tight junction protein to the actin cytoskeleton withstanding shearing forces by epithelial sheets or defining the apical and basolateral region of the plasma membrane basically tight junctions are present in apical region of the cell not the basolateral region 
and formed by multiple protein complex having integral transmembrane proteins which are cloud in occludin like these kind of protein and then they have a cytosolic adapter protein like zonula occludens the zonula occludens proteins they connect the transmembrane protein with the actin cytosolic network like as you can see in the diagram so hence here the option b would be the correct that zonula occludens protein in tight junction of epithelial cell sheet is required to link the cytosolic domain of tight junction proteins to the actin cytoskeleton okay in this question what would happen if the ph of the mitochondrial matrix is maintained at 7 and ph of intermembrane space remain unaffected then what would be the consequences will atp synthesis would be unaffected movement of protons through f0 complex would be reduced the potential would remain at 140 millivolt or adp would be imported into the matrix what would happen basically you know that in respiratory mitochondria protons are pumped into the intermembrane spaces this is the matrix ph is becoming slightly alkaline around 7.8 while the intermembrane space is on the little bit acidic side like around 7 to 7.4 now as the question is saying that intermembrane space ph is constant that means it is unaffected while the matrix ph is reduced to 7 then what would happen see if the matrix ph and intermembrane space they will be having similar ph then how the proton gradient will be formed and if proton gradient will not be formed then there will be no driving force to make the atp because atp are only formed when the protons gradient it makes a gradient and then the proton comes out and correspondingly it gives you a mechanical energy which is being converted in making atps so hence in this case the movement of proton through f0 complex would be reduced which will compromise the atp synthesis which one of the following is not an actin binding protein spectrin alpha actinin enchirin and filamin basically if you see the actin binding protein they binds to actin some of the examples are alpha actinin beta spectrin dystrophin eutrophin filamin and fimbrin enchirin they do not bind directly to the actin rather they bind to the spectrin which can bind to the actin so hence in this case enchirin cannot be a actin binding protein phosphorylation of intermediate filaments generally leads to the their disassembly this modification is observed in basically what happens is intermediate filaments or if filaments they are the least dynamic component of cytoskeleton and generally they are not found in those cells that are involved in moving movement so if any process by which the if elements are going off that will lead to the enhancement of the movement hence phosphorylation is a process by which intermediate filaments is generally lost and that's this kind of a phenomena is most often seen in the migratory cells identify the statement that is true for prophase of mitosis so we have to find out which statement is a characteristic feature of the prophase of mitosis which is one of the longest phase of mitosis duplication of the centrosomes takes place no that happens during the s phase of interface that means the duplication of centrosomes and duplication of dna they both happens to be in the s phase of the interface once this is being done then this duplicated centrosome and its centriole they start moving to the opposite sides of the nucleus during the prophase which is a characteristic feature of a prophase the microtubule of the spindle fibers they start attaching to the kinetochores of condensed chromosome in prometaphase while the chromosomes start moving towards the center of the mitotic spindle fibers that happens to be in the metaphase so here the option b is the correct answer that that duplication of centrosomes they start happens which has happened in the s phase they start moving to the opposite sides of the nucleus in prophase of mitosis which of the following is not a component of the epinephrine cyclic amp signaling pathway for glycogen breakdown 
एडिनलाइल साइक्लेस प्रोटीन काइनेज ए फोस्फोराइलेज काइनेज और क्री बाइंडिंग प्रोटीन एज यू कैन सी इन द डायग्राम वंस द एपिनेफरिन बाइंड्स टू इट्स रिसेप्टर इट एक्टिवेट्स एडिनलाइल साइक्लेस व्हिच कन्वर्ट्स एटीपी टू द साइक्लिक एमपी साइक्लिक एमपी एज वी नो इट्स अ सेकेंडरी मैसेंजर व्हिच एक्टिवेट द साइक्लिक एमपी डिपेंडेंट प्रोटीन काइनेज ए व्हिच इन टर्न एक्टिवेट द फॉस्फोराइलेज काइनेज एक्टिवेशन ऑफ फॉस्फोराइलेज काइनेज promotes the degradation of glycogen into glucose that means the activation of glycogenolysis hence first फर्स्ट थ्री कॉम्पोनेंट एडिनलाइल साइक्लेस प्रोटीन काइनेज ए फॉस्फोराइलाइज काइनेस दे ऑल थ्री आर रिलेटेड टू द ग्लाइकोजिनोलिसिस एंड हेंस ऑप्शन डी वुड बी द आंसर दैट इट इज नॉट रिलेटेड टू द ग्लाइकोजन ब्रेकडाउन रेदर क्री दैट मीन्स cyclic amp responsive element it is present on the dna where the cre binding protein binds so hence as far as epinephrine cyclic amp signaling pathway for glycogen breakdown is concerned the adenyl cyclase protein kinase a and phosphoryl kinase is important in the mismatch repair system in e coli mutes mutech and mutel are the three key players the repair of mismatch in a newly replicated dna can be initiated by these protein because see what happens is mismatch repair system removes errors which must have escaped the proofreading process during replication so if at all such mutation comes or mismatch comes the mutes recognize them bind to the mismatch site and cause a kink because of this kink uh, another protein that is mute l it comes up and binds to the mutes and both of them they recruit another protein that is mutech which is a nuclease this nuclease can cut down the dna which one the old dna that means parental strain or the newly synthesized strain so here comes the methylation process there is an enzyme called dam methylase it selectively methylate a parental strain upstream of that at a particular sequence that is called a gatc so it methylates the adenine of gatc sequence present in the parental strand upstream of mismatch site now your daughter strand which is also have a gatc sequence in the same orientation but is not methylated which is being recognized by the mutech and being cleaved out there so parental strand is preserved while daughter strand is being cleaved and rectified so hence the option d would be the correct answer in this case Which of the modified nucleotide in a tRNA is responsible for vowel in codon anticodon? It's a vionine, inosine, thiosine, or pseudo uridine. Basically, vowel base pairing is a pairing between two nucleotides in RNA molecule that does not follow the Watson-Crick pairing. That means adenine binds to the thymine, while uh, cytosine that binds to the guanine. Inosine it display a true quality of a vowel. so that it can interact with multiple options like it can interact with a aapka cytosine it can interact with uridine it can interact with adenine so hence in this case the inosine would be the correct answer that inosine is a modified nucleotide in a tRNA that is responsible for the vowel in codon anticodon concept in eukaryotic cells unfolded or misfolded proteins are degraded in this is very simple they are being degraded in the proteasomes so once your target protein is being decided to degrade so it is being signaled it is being put a ubiquitin signal peptide which is selectively takes it to the proteasomes where it is being degraded so hence the option b is the correct answer that in eukaryotic cell unfolded and misfolded proteins are degraded in proteasomes for which for this discovery in 2004 the nobel prize was given to the scientist which of the following is observed during anaphase a depolymerization of microtubules shortening of polar microtubules consumption of atp by motor proteins or sliding of polar microtubules see one thing is very clear that whether it's a anaphase a or anaphase b during anaphase event the chromosomes they get separated and tries to go towards the poles here the activity of these spindle fiber tubulins it is of very much importance there are three types of tubules are there 
the kinetochore microtubules are those to which the chromosomes are attached. Polar microtubules are those spindle fibers where there is no chromosomes are attached and there is another type of microtubule is there which is present at the pole that is called astral microtubule. So during the anaphase whether it is a 1 or 2 activity of these microtubules that causes the separation of chromosomes and movement of these chromosomes towards the respective poles. So exactly what happens during the anaphase A? There is a depolymerization of kinetochore microtubules happens and because of which there is a shortening of this microtubules happens and this drives a force by which the chromosomes are forced to get separated and move towards the pole. This very same kind of a thing happens during the anaphase 2 but the difference is while in the case of anaphase 1 the force was derived from the kinetochore microtubule while in the case of anaphase 2 the force is derived from the sliding movement of polar microtubule and the there is another pulling force is being provided by the astral microtubule. So there is a no role of kinetochore microtubule as far as anaphase 2 is concerned which is predominantly found in anaphase 1. Hence the option A is correct that the depolymerization of microtubules that is the kinetochore microtubules actually causes the separation of chromosomes which allows these chromosomes to move towards the poles. Bidirectional movement of vesicle requires kinesin 1, microtubules and microfilaments, a flexible neck region on the motor proteins or association of plus and minus n directed motors. Basically what happens is as we know that microtubules are polarized that means they have plus and minus ends and that is where the specifically molecular motors like dynein which is a negatively directed motor and kinesin which is a positively directed motor they both collectively works in tandem to derive the bidirectional vesicle transform which is also known as tug of war. So as you can see in the diagram there are two molecular forces are there one is dynein this molecular motor actually is taking the cargo towards the negative side negative uh, end of the microtubule while kinesin it is taking the cargo towards the positive end of the microtubule and hence the option D is correct that the bidirectional movement of which cycles it requires association of plus and minus and directed motors. Sympotors are co-transporters that transport small molecules and gases in the same direction, cations and anions in the opposite direction, sodium ions and glucose against the concentration gradient and glucose against its concentration gradient. First of all you should know that a sympotor will be a co-transporter if at all it is transporting two chemicals or two metabolites in the same direction. Sim means same and co means there must be at least two components which will be transported. For example, a sodium glucose transporter which transport the sodium as per its concentration gradient means from higher concentration to the lower concentration gradient. Definitely there will be a force will be generated which will drive the movement of glucose as per their uphill concentration gradient that means from low concentration to the higher concentration and that is where in this case the option D would be the correct answer that a sodium glucose co-transporter or symporter it derives the glucose against its concentration gradient. Gap junctions are not essential for transfer of secondary messengers, metabolic coupling, peristalsis or skeletal muscle contractions. Gap junction they are basically found in almost all tissues except fully developed skeletal muscle cells or mobile cells like sperms or RBC. So here the gap junction will not be essential for skeletal muscle contraction or option D. Cilia and flagella they contain a contractile protein which is called as dynein, tubulin, actin or myosin. Basically eukaryotic cilia and flagella they are composed of a contractile motor protein that is called dynein and a non-contractile microtubulin which is composed of tubulin proteins. So hence option A would be the correct answer that the dynein is the contractile protein which actually uses the chemical energy of ATP and 
generate a force which is required for the locomotion or any kind of a movement. At what stage of a eukaryotic cell the chromatin will be the least compact? See, it is very easy. The chromatin will be least compact during the DNA replication, which occurs in the S phase. So, hence option C that would be a correct answer that, that during the S phase the chromatin will be the least compact in nature. At centromere, heterochromatin formation is directed by which biochemical process that silences the gene expression in eukaryotes? Basically, at centromere, there are some repetitive DNA sequences which are present as a heterochromatin, which was silenced by the RNA interference process or RNAi, which we popularly call it, in which the nucleus component, they silence the expression of these DNA sequences and they become the heterochromatin, as you can see. So here in the op this question, option A would be the correct answer that RNA interference, they silence the genes which are ultimately becoming the heterochromatin nearby the centromere. You have been asked to choose a fixative to fix the tissue by making methylene bridges in proteins. Which one would you choose? Glacial acetic acid, formalin, picric acid or osmium tetroxide? During sample preparation, there are four types of fixative are generally common in use. Oxidizing agent which can cross link the proteins, metallic precipitators, alcohol based fixative which are denaturating agent, while aldehyde which possess an oxo group or carbonyl group. For example, formaldehyde which are present in solution as a formalin, since it is having an oxo group that means formal C double bond O, so by this they can make an shift based linkage with the NH2 group and ultimately it can yield a methylene bridge by which the two proteins can be connected to formaldehyde through their NH2 group. So, hence option B would be the correct answer in this case. Pharyngeal gill slits are unicordate characteristics found in fishes, crabs, snails or aquatic insects or found in higher invertebrates and vertebrates or not found in protocordates but are present in invertebrates at least during the embryonic life. See, the characteristic feature of any chordate which they possess during any phase of their lives are they are having at least notochord or dorsal hollow nerve cord or pharyngeal gill slits. So, having a pharyngeal gill slits, it is a unique chordate characteristic and hence option A would be the correct answer. In terrestrial vertebrates, which of the following structure did not arise from the pharyngeal pouches? Eustachian tube, middle ears, invertebral disc, or parathyroid glands. Basically, in tetrapods, when they develop, so pharyngeal clefts, they produce parts of ears and other structure of head and neck region. For example, first pharyngeal pouch, it led to the development of eustachian tube or middle ear. Second, it led to the development of palatine tonsil, while third and fourth, they actually helps in developing parathyroid glands. Intervertebral discs, they are not made by the modification of pharyngeal pouches. So, hence option C would be the correct answer in this case. The origin of jaw in the nephrostomes is from the gill arches, bone supporting the cranium, notochord or SK pouches. Basically, nephrocombs develops jaws to capture the larger prey. So, they have a very large buccal cavity so that they can develop, uh, they can capture the larger prey. And with these buccal cavities, they are developed from the simple transformation of their ancestral gill arches, especially the rostral gill arches or mandibular arches. So, hence the origin of the jaws in the nephrostomes is from the gill arches. Option A is correct. Match list 1 with the list 2 items. Here in the list 1, there are different taxonomic hierarchies are given and we have to match with their list 2 components. So, let us take the example. Here, in this case of toad, the domain is eukarya, kingdom is animalia, division is nephrostomata. That means A is connected to 3. Phylum is chordata, while subphylum is vertebrata. Class is amphibia. That means B is being connected with the fourth. Order is anura. That means C is connected to A. Family is renidae. That means D is connected to the 2. Hence, the option A would be the correct answer in this case. Dentition in mammal is 
Thicodont, homodont, diphodont, thicodont, heterodont, diphodont, acrodont, homodont, monophyodont, or acrodont, heterodont, polyphyodont. Any kind of arrangement of teeth in upper or lower jaw that is known as dentition. And dentition in mammals is having one set rule that is they are having thicodontites in which the teeth are fitted into the bony pockets of the jawbone. So option A or B, either of these must be the correct answer. Since we follow the two types of teeth in our life, the baby teeth or the adult teeth. So we are diphodont. Now the difference comes whether we are heterodont or homodont. Since we are having the teeth, different types of teeth depending on the kind of a process which we expect from the teeth like incisor, canines, molars, premolars. So we are having heterodont types of teeth. So dentition in mammals is thecodont, heterodont and diphodont. That is option B. Hilsa migrates for breeding purposes from and hence classified as the dash type of fishes. Hilsa is basically a anadromous type of fishes where most of its life they spend in the oceans, but to lay eggs they come into the estuary or fresh water. So hence the option C would be the correct answer that the Hilsa migrates for breeding purposes from salt water to fresh water and it is classified as anadromous type of fishes. During the muscle contraction calcium ion release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum binds to which of the following to initiate the muscle contraction. Basically during the muscle contraction calcium ions are released from smooth endoplasmic reticulum which bind to troponin and ultimately causing the troponin tropomyosin complex to change its shape and which causes the removal of tropomyosin from the myosin binding sites. So now myosin binding sites are free to bind with myosin and ultimately the muscle contraction occurs. Hence, option A would be the correct answer that once the calcium ions are released from the sarcoplasmic and reticulum, it binds to the troponin. Which of the following cells would like to be found in the tissues lining the organ that produces and releases mucus? The answer would be the goblet cells because goblet cells are specialized cells which secrete mucin, which is an important component of mucus. So option A would be the correct answer in such case. In bone, the crystallized inorganic mineral salt and the collagen fibers along with each other, organic molecules contributes to. Bone tissue, they contains an abundant extracellular matrix component which has a 15% of water, 30% of collagen which actually contributes to tensile strength and 55% of crystalline mineral salts which actually provides the hardness. So, Option A would be the correct answer that the mineral salts is providing the hardness while collagen fibers they are providing the tensile strength in the case of bones. Which of the following are the source of ATP for muscle contractions, glycolysis, keratine phosphate, aerobic cellular respiration or arginine phosphate. So we have to choose the correct combinations. As we know that ATP is must for muscle contraction. So, in case of resting muscles, there are nearby some ATP molecules are placed which can be utilized if muscle comes into the action. Keratin phosphate may serve as a fallback option if you require the ATP for a longer run. If you do require a more ATP, let's say for hours, then that can be provided by the glycolysis. But for a longer run, if you want an ATP supply, constant flush of ATP, then you have to rely over electron transport chain or aerobic cellular respiration. And hence, in this case, the option A would be the correct answer that for muscle contraction, we can rely over the glycolysis, keratin phosphate and aerobic cellular respiration. Option A is correct. Neurotransmitters are removed from the synaptic cleft by axonal transport, diffusion away from the cleft, neurosecretory cells, enzymatic breakdown or cellular uptake. Again, we have to choose the correct combinations. So if you can see in this diagram, 
once these neurotransmitters are released and its job is being done then they can either diffuse away from the cleft or they can be enzymatically break down by acetylcholinesterase or they can be reused or reabsorbed by the cellular uptake so hence in this case the option b would be the correct answer the diffusion away from the cleft enzymatic breakdown and cellular uptake are the major pathways for the removal of neurotransmitters from the synaptic cleft thank you for watching please do subscribe us and hit the bell icon for the more updates thank you